What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I was just going through earlier today re-watching and watching some of the games I didn't get a chance to fully watch yesterday and uh, brought me to a topic that's really been on my mind since the end of last season and more so recently and that is uh, the effects of this new SEC, the divisionless SEC, uh, the effects that that would have on the conference and really college football as a whole. And uh, I think, you know, especially over these last couple of weeks with, you know, each team now having two or three SEC games under their belt, you're starting to see a lot of the effects of this new SEC and the new NIL era and kind of the free agency era in, uh, in college football. So first, uh, starting out, I think that, you know, when people first you know, when people first found out about the divisionless SEC, um, they knew that there was going to and the 12 team playoff. That's another thing I forgot about. They knew that there would be, you know, some two, three loss teams making it into the playoffs coming out of the SEC. With that being said, though, I think looking at the schedule going into this this season, I don't think, you know, anyone would have picked Vandy to beat Bama, you know, Kentucky to be as competitive as they've been, you know, first early in the season against uh, Georgia and, you know, most recently against Ole Miss. You know, Ole Miss loses to LSU. So the parity of college football we knew was going to be balanced out in this new era with NIL. You know, you can go buy players to fill spots, fill deficiencies in your teams. But I don't think anybody could have expected how Jurassic the effects of, you know, a 10-11 game SEC schedule would have on these teams. And I think one of the biggest things that it's showing is that the key positions on the field, they're more important than ever. What is that? The O-line, of course, the, the edge rushers on defense, and of course your quarterback, you know, which has been a thing with the, uh, the evolution of the game. You know, uh, now more than ever this last decade, you need a, a, an elite quarterback to get you a national championship. But... More so than ever, the effect of an offensive line and having a good edge rushers, it's, it's showing now more than ever, right? And so with all that stuff being taken into account, you're seeing teams with banged up O-lines and teams with young offensive lines. They don't have a chance to, you know, get worked in, if you would, through the course of, you know, four or five weeks before they have to, you know, play the tough part of their schedule. Uh, these O-lines, these these young groups and these patched together groups, they got to learn on the fly. And anybody who plays football will know if, you know, fall camp, you know, going into the first two, three, four weeks of the season, uh, defense is going to be ahead of the offense just because it takes the entire offense to be executing like a well-oiled machine for, uh, you know, that offense to be effective and that offense to keep it moving. Um, defense, the it's easier to install the base things and, ju and just kind of be good. Of course, you still got to do your job, but not as complex to get going, if you will, as offense. And that's something that we've seen through these first couple of weeks, right? You know, even when teams have shown that explosiveness and their potential on offense, they're never, it hasn't been consistent for a lot of these teams, right? And so consistency for these teams has been another major thing. Uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is that Alabama-Georgia game. You know, it was a tale of two halves for both teams. Both teams, I think, showed their maximum potential. But it's not about your potential. It's about the product that you put on the field at the end of the day. And ultimately, you know, neither of those two teams have shown consistency. Really, the only team, in my opinion, that has shown some real consistency is Texas. And, you know, against Oklahoma this past weekend, that Brett Venable's defense was, you know, causing them Texas some troubles at the beginning of the game. But what was Texas able to rely on that veteran offensive line with multiple fifth year guys, multiple first, you know, second round draft picks on that offensive line for Texas? They were able to lean on them and establish a run against the Oklahoma front seven who is star studded. They have one of the best linebackers in college football, and the push that Texas's O line was getting was able to keep Texas afloat and help them find some consistency and some rhythm in their offense where otherwise, you know, it couldn't be found. And on the other side of that coin from that game, you have Oklahoma, who has 
a great defense. They have the weapons, but they do not have an O-line or a quarterback good enough to end this new SEC with this intense schedule, even win them four games. So the demand for these positions is at an all-time high. You know, like I mentioned earlier with the parity of college football balancing out, you being able to go fill voids in your team with uh, the NIL and the transfer portal, you can go get some skill position players. You know, it's they're obviously a lot more, you know, easier to come by. It's no secret. Um, with that being said, you know, if you can get, you know, like a Pavia from Vanderbilt and have a good game plan built around him with a solid defense, you can beat an Alabama who's shown that their offense is inconsistent with an inconsistent defense. Even a team like Kentucky, who went out and got a bunch of guys to fill out their defense to make their defense a real legit unit, one of the most underrated in college football, I think. They go and get Vandergriff from the transfer uh, transfer portal at quarterback, and they have a unit good enough to compete with these teams in the SEC. Now, with all that being said, what's the effect that this is going to have? What effect is this going to have on the SEC, with all that being said, and college football as a whole? Because what I think you're going to start seeing, and what you've already seen with teams like Tennessee multiple times this year, is they are starting to play the field position battle. It's more about controlling the ball, controlling possessions. In the NFL, you're, you're seeing a lot more runs, a lot more runs this year. It's becoming more about controlling the clock, controlling the ball, playing the field position battle. And I think that's what you're going to see a lot more of in college football. And I think we already are seeing a lot more of in college football this year. Teams are just playing the field position battle, want to rely on the quarterback play, want to rely on their O-lines to keep the ball moving, keep the ball in their hands, you know, punting the ball away, relying on good defenses to get their ball back in better field position, you know, kind of slowly marching your way down the field. And I think that's something that we're already seeing um, because of all these factors, right? So this is just a quick video. There's going to be a, a full breakdown of uh, this past week of college football. Like I said, I'll, I, you know, I'm preparing for that. So expect that either uh, tonight, this Sunday, or sometime Monday. Subscribe and, and turn on the notifications so you'll you'll know when that video comes out because I'm not completely sure uh, when it's going to be out. We still don't have internet from the hurricane. Um, but let me know what you guys think and what you think about this new SEC, right, a couple weeks in, about halfway through the season. Uh, how is it affecting college football as a whole? As a whole, And uh, how is it going to affect, you know, the 12-team playoffs, right? Because you still got Missouri. Missouri's schedule, you know, compared to the SEC, the rest of the SEC, we know that, you know, it's it's pretty light comparatively. So a one-loss Missouri team, are they getting in over, you know, a two-loss Georgia team or, you know, a two- or three-loss Alabama team, depending on how the losses and games go? So, so many more variables, guys. These games mean so much more. Earlier in the season, you know, um, Ohio State, Oregon in the Big Ten. It, it's across all the college football, but just the SEC in particular for this video, guys. How do you think that the changes are affecting the game? Let me know, and I'll see you in the next one.